Right there, welcome along to the sweet spot. Bruce Millington and Steve Palmer looking back on the Masters and looking ahead to two tournaments, one in America, one in Europe. Lots to cover. First of all, Steve, sum up your mood post the Masters in three words. Gloomy, despondent, tired. Oh. Is it tired and emotional? Did you know it? <laughs> Yeah, well, no, it's, it's all right. It sums it up, doesn't it? I, it was really disappointing, wasn't it, Steve? I mean, uh, before we get your in-depth view of it, it kind of felt to me like a line of duty. Do you watch Line of Duty? I do, I do. I behave a lot like D.I. Steve Arnott at the moment. I've got a lot of back problems like him, hoping to not get addicted oh, to painkillers right. like he is, yeah. Yeah, but it felt like, you know, you, the first couple of episodes, you're sort of hooked and you're really excited. Who is it? Who's it going to be? You know, when are they going to unveil it? And then... So halfway through the penultimate episode, the whole plot just comes out. And then you, you kind of think, well, do I need to even bother watching the final episode? It was, kind of felt like that. So much so that I actually did watch Line of Duty rather than <laughs> The Masters on Sunday. But, I mean, fair play to Hideki Matsuyama. He got it done. But, I mean, I, I was looking back at through it. So if, how, how could you have... I mean, you surely can't have kicked... Just, some tournaments you kick yourself, don't you? Because you should have tipped the winner. But Matsuyama, known leaderboard allergy no top tens this year okay masters record but nothing spectacular how are you going to find Hideki Matsuyama well I am going to kick myself I have to kick myself because he was the number one selection in 2019 so the last eight so masters what? this is number one 2019 selection. well yeah but I've backed him for so many masters so he's always been on my masters radar um and this year uh, up to Sawgrass, he was on my master's radar. Do you remember the Sawgrass debacle? Hideki Matsuyama was our tip for Sawgrass a month ago, and he missed the cut by a shot of Sawgrass. And that was the moment where my, my patience with Matsuyama had worn thin. I thought, I cannot trust him anymore with hard-earned cash. He should have played well at Sawgrass, and he didn't. So from then on, uh, he was off the master's radar. But you know, the thing is, it's very easy to give up on players. It's, it's something I'm probably more guilty of than most. You, know, you, you get frustrated with someone and you give up on him. He's only 29 years old. So there I was, backing him through all his 20s for the Masters. And then at 29, I've given up on him. You know, I, I think I was a bit impatient there. You know, and, um, I'm so not I'll, sure, I'll Steve. It's difficult because some, sometimes I think you're too loyal to certain players. You, you know the ones like Detry and Peters and various others. And, it's, it must be really hard for a golf tipster because you tip someone because you think they're better than the market is. So if you think that one week, I suppose logically you've got to think that that's a consistent theme, isn't it? So it must be the most galling thing in the world when you give up on someone and then they win. But like I say, if you spell it out like I did, Steve, there wasn't a lot to advertise his claims, was there? Well, he's a healthy price because of that, wasn't he? He's 45 to 1. He was 33 to 1 when I tipped him in 2019. He was 45 to 1 for the Masters. And we're banging on about strokes gained on approach, weren't we, last week? You know, Matsuyama's career has been built on his, his accurate approach play. You know, Augusta sets up well for him and he took his chance. I mean, yeah, you, know, you saw the little wobble that he had coming home. He, he, he made it hard work in the end, didn't he? So that made me feel a little bit better because that was my, my thinking on him that he wouldn't be able to handle it down the stretch. But he had such a big buffer that he got away with it. I mean, the, the thir 13th, he was really, really lucky on Sunday, wasn't he? Too, you know, his tee shot was oblivion bound. And he got away with that. Then his second shot was oblivion bound. How he made a birdie on the 13th hole on Sunday. That, that was the key moment, the clincher. He had the right person behind him as well, didn't he? Because like, I think we both agree that people are a little bit too kind of free and easy with this choker tag. But Chauffele, I mean, blimey, got himself into contention. All he had to do was find the dance floor on 16, see if Matsuyama was going to combust. And then he, well, I mean... I don't know whether it was an overambitious line or whether he just didn't hit it properly, but it was a pig of a shot, wasn't it? Well, he, I mean, he always talks a good game afterwards. He never admits any mental weakness. He said he just misjudged the wind. But, I mean, I think most of the wind was coming out of his bottom, if you don't mind me being so crude. I mean, to hit it that far left, you know, when, when you've got to hit it way right to get the curve down to, down to the hole, it was an absolute shocker. He's finished second eight times since his last victory and he's finished third three times since his last victory and his last couple of thirds have been horror stories you know colonially Mr Late Tiddler there to finish third in June and then the triple bogey on Sunday so um, yeah I think Shefali is almost unbackable until he wins. Mm, absolutely but this kid Zalatoris I mean again you, you've been talking him up from the world go he is something else isn't he 
And uh, I think it was Wayne Riley said that he looks like Owen Wilson, the actor. He really, really does. But he also just looks like if you were doing a, a film of Bernard Langer's life story, he'd play the sort of early years, wouldn't he? It's extraordinary. <laughs> he would, yeah. He was just awesome, wouldn't he? I mean, I thought he was the main danger to, to Matsuyama on Sunday because he, he seemed so comfortable in that environment, didn't he? And he, he, he's got a lovely high ball flight for Augusta as well. So, yeah, going forward, Zalatoris is, is on the radar for future Masters. But also this year, the US Open, what a huge opportunity for him, the US Open at Torrey Pines. He was sixth in the US Open last year. He was seventh at Torrey Pines in the Farmers Insurance Open when we were on him in, in January. So I think of all the majors coming up, Zalatoris is massively on the US Open radar. Yeah, I love Zalatoris. He's superb, isn't he? Let's talk about some of the big names. I mean, you know, by Friday night, a lot of the big names were packing their bags. Well, Dustin couldn't really pack his bags because he had to stay there and put the jacket on. Um, in, in and yet another superbly cringy ceremony. It was brilliant. <laughs> I do love that that jacket ceremony in the Butler cabinet. Where it's just super. It never changes at all. So Dustin was a big letdown. Poor old Rory. I mean, what are we going to do with him? He's just. It's, I wouldn't say it's sad to see him smashing it into the bushes left, right, and centre because he's probably got fifty million in the bank. He doesn't need my sympathy, but. Equally, I mean, it, 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 is there a way back? Yeah, yeah, he just needs to hit the reset button. I mean, I, I, my concern for Mackerel last week, he just switched coaches. I think that came too near to the Masters. He, he, he was a confused man last week. I mean, he's indecisive. Um, so, yeah, he needs some time away. Get on a beach. I think Butch was suggesting getting him on, on a beach. I think that would be essential. And then when he comes back, he can get to work with Pete Cowan. Maybe the US PGA will come too soon now as well. I don't know. I mean, he, that, he, Macaron is my big hope for the US PGA. Um, so, yeah, he, he, he could win that. Got a great record in that. But, yeah, he needs to, get, needs to hit the reset button, talk to Pete Cowan, get the swing sorted. Yeah, Bryson, yet another cat-handed week, wasn't it? No good from him. Um, what about some of the other guys? I mean, Thomas, at one point, Steve, I must say, I can't remember whether it was Friday night or not. You looked like the lord of the leaderboard, didn't you? You had Harmon up there, you had Smith up there. Thomas was lurking with Menace and they all just yeah. evaporated, didn't they? I mean, Thomas must, Thomas's decline must have hurt you deeply, didn't it? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Friday, we were, we were going great guns on the Friday. And then on the Saturday night, it's one of the most depressing Saturday nights I've had in a, in a long while. I mean, Justin Thomas went from basically tournament favourite to a complete no-hoper in the space of five holes. Um, and the thunderstorm delay was not ideal. I'm not making excuses for him, but he, he was stewing on that par part of the ninth for an hour when he in the thunderstorm delay. You know, that par part of the ninth was so crucial when he came back. That he missed that. It was a three part. And then he went to the tenth and missed a tiddler for birdie on the tenth. And then another three part of the eleventh. We talked about the putting last week. You know, it was really disappointing that stretch with the putter. And then he mentally imploded on the thirteenth hole, didn't he? Triple bogey on the thirteenth to, to kill his chance. So yeah, Justin Thomas really disappointed. Finished twenty first. Cameron Smith scraped into the each ways, didn't he? He got finished finished tenth. Um, he's got a great Augusta record now. Three top tens in five visits. So Cameron Smith very very comfortable at Augusta. That fifteenth hole killed him in, in round two. And Brian Harmon, I mean, one shot out of places. Yeah, uh, he uh, played 16, well. With the sixteenth hole, that very good tip. That Steve. That, thanks. Yeah, I was pleased with it. But the sixteenth hole killed him on on Sunday. He, you talk about Shafali going too far left. Harmon went too far right and ended up in the bunker, which is almost a guaranteed bogey from there. So that was where he dropped the shot, which dropped him out of the places. But um, yeah, we had some good fun on the derivatives, I suppose. John, John Rahm, top European, Zalatoris, top debutant, Connors, top Canadian. So we had we got a little bit back there. But yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it was all looking so promising. And then um, I'm not surprised you switched to line of duty on, on Sunday. Mm, yeah, never mind. Um, is there any other uh, golfers you wanted to mention or anything you thought? I mean, the course looked, we have to say the course looked beautiful. And I will just put a word in for Sky's coverage. I think they've got their commentary team sorted out now. Butch was absolutely magnificent. It was great to have Butch back on there. Uh, right. I, th I just thought that Sky covered it really, really well. They're doing it remotely, so it makes it slightly different. So that was good. Like I say, of course, beautiful. Um, you know, the Masters is the Masters. It's fantastic. It's just disappointing, isn't it, when it doesn't boil up into that. Sunday night thriller. Was there any other players, though, that you thought um, might be worth taking out of the event? I think it's important to mention Jordan Spieth because he's such a ridiculous comeback, isn't it? To, to finish third in the Masters and be disappointed given where he's come from. I mean, he, he went off for the Phoenix Open a couple of months ago. You know, rubbish event. 100 to 1. He was 100 to 1 for the Phoenix Open. Two months later, he's finishing third in the Masters. He's disappointed. He's got you know, a fantastic Masters record. just further bolstered it. So, yeah, Jordan Spieth fans can be very, very excited by life. And if, and if he can just drive a little straighter, I mean, he could absolutely rule the world, couldn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan Spieth is back. You know, he admits he's not got his A game yet and he's still, you know, he's won the Texas Open. He's contending for the Masters. So, yeah, yeah, the future's bright for him. Pleased to see him back. 
lovely stuff. Okay, let's move on to this week, Steve. We've got two tournaments. We've got the RBC Heritage. Is that the one at Hilton Head? Is that the one with the par five where the sea sort of juts into the fairway and there's a big tree somewhere along the way? Or am I getting mixed up with Greensboro? I can't remember. I don't know. Well, the, 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 the lighthouse is the key, wasn't it? The 18th. The lighthouse. The, the lighthouse is beautiful at Hilton Head you know, on, on the 18th. Very tough, uh, you know, massive fairway, but a really tough second shot. That's the one. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, what else? Oh, let's have a look at the old market first, shall we? Uh, these are indicative prices. Dustin Johnson at 10 to 1. Is he going to turn up, Steve? He's always sort of a bit hit and miss these days, isn't he? If he was yes. a schoolboy, he's... He'd be getting a note to his parents saying that, that you know he's missing the register not very much, but he's definitely coming, is he? He wouldn't get his attendance badge, would he? Yeah, there's, a, there's always a lot no, of talk about that wouldn't. in my school. My, my, my wife is vehemently opposed to attendance badges because she says it's unfair on people that get ill. I kind of get her point, but yeah, I don't think Dustin's been ill, he just can't be asked, can he? But he's, he's sponsored by RBC, so um, he'll, he'll have a gun to his head this week, he'll have to turn up. Okay, fair enough. I think I think she's right, by the way. It's a good point that. I mean, kids can't help being ill, can they? You don't want to send them in, do you? particularly in the current climate. If they've got a sniffle, that could be disastrous. Yeah. Right, Dustin Johnson, 10 to 1. Webb Simpson, 12s. Cantley, another one who's disappointing last week. He's 16s. Murakama was disappointing last week. He's 20s. Berger, 22. Fitzpatrick, 25. Hatton, 25. It's like a sort of an event for, for golfers who disappointed last week with one or two exceptions. How many tips this week, Steve? I got five in this. Well, I never, never like having loads, but I got five in this and then only two in the other one. So, um, yeah, no, you don't have to apologise. Five's yeah. absolutely fine. I mean, five, no yeah, harm in that five. whatsoever, Steve. You, okay. you tip however many you think will yield a profit. That's the name of the game, isn't it? It is. OK, then. Right. Do you want to give us a course overview or straight into the tips? Well, I'd like to because it's a, it's, a, it's one of my favourite courses, actually. 7,121 yards past 71, a classic seaside test. Very thin fairways, tiny greens. So accuracy from tee to green is essential. And then sharp scrambling around these little greens is important, too. OK. okay. Right, then. Headline selection. And the headline selection is Matthew Fitzpatrick. I think Matt Fitzpatrick's wait for a PGA Tour title comes to an end on Sunday. He adores this course. Harbour Town sets up perfectly for his game. And uh, the way he's been playing this year, it's is, is difficult to imagine him not contending. He got back to winning ways on the European Tour at the end of last year, just before Christmas, won the DP World Tour Championship. And he's carried that form into 2021. He was fifth at Riviera, 11th at the Concession, 10th at Bay Hill, 9th at Sawgrass. A couple of wins at the match play. Only Jordan Spieth beat him at the match play. And then 34th last, last week at Augusta. Didn't putt as well as he normally does. Couldn't really get in the mix. But don't you worry about that. He's been very, very steady this year, Fitzpatrick. And, and Harbour Town is the sort of place that will fully reward him for that. He's finished 14th in two of his last three starts there, but he's never arrived there in such good form as he is in now. Um, he's world number 17, Fitzpatrick. Time to give him a bit of respect and time to make him the headline selection for the RBC Heritage. Lovely. You make a very strong case for him. OK, next best. Next best is Abraham Answer. I think hunger is very important this week. Some players might have a master's hangover, not be fully switched on. Fitzpatrick chasing his maiden PJ Tour title will not be... Um, will not be dissuaded from what am I talking about? <laughs> not be dis not be that was excellent. That was like, where's he going? <laughs> will not be dissuaded. Um, he'll be fully focused, fully switched yeah, on, gotcha. as will Abraham Answer. Okay, and Abraham Answer last year in this, it, it, I've never seen a player play so well and not win. Do you remember this one? We were on Webb Simpson, so we were very pleased he didn't win. It was the, it was the second tournament back after the, the big lockdown restart. If you keep Bashing away. Still at your don't head. remember. No. <laughs> I honestly won't, mate. I mean, unless he played Stark Bollock naked or something. I, I, just, I can't remember these things, Steve. Sorry, mate. But I, I I'll believe. Keep trying to jog your memory. He, he finished okay. 64, 65, 65, Abraham Answer, and, and lost by a shot to Webb Simpson. Um, so Answer was really unlucky last year to finish runner up. And last week, he was really unlucky in the Masters. I mean, no doubt you were getting furious about his two shot penalty. Did you hear about that? He got, oh yeah, he touched the um, he touched the sand, and you know I, I I'm okay with that. Did he get grassed up though by by a TV viewer? Or just by the fact that the cameras everywhere, yeah, the, the high definition camera caught that. Yeah, yeah, I think there was an element of being grassed up. I, I wasn't. No, I don't mind that. Because that because that I did that, see that there was rules. A... You're not allowed to do it, and he did it, so I don't mind that. It's where they like touch a. a a pigeon's feather with their on their backswing, and you know someone rings in two days later, and then they sling them out. That's the ridiculous. See, one. But yeah. no, that's fair yeah. enough. You're not allowed to touch the bunker before you hit the ball. So absolutely, but it created a huge psychological uh, hurdle for him because he didn't know he'd done it, 
And then after the round, he gets told he got a too short penalty. So it's a real gut buster for him. Uh, and he did well to finish 26th in the end in the Masters. Um, you know, to, to that to happen on the Thursday to finish 26th. I thought it's a credible effort. Ants has been in good nick and he's going to a course he really likes. So, yeah, Matt Fitzpatrick, number one. Abraham Anson, number two. And then we got uh, three more. And the are you list... tipping Zalatoris, by the way? Because I've just looked down. He's third uh, on the, the list I'm looking at. He's thirty to one. That's a big price, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in the. He's playing up. He's teeing again. But I mean, yeah, yeah, you talk about mental hangovers. You know, traditionally, this tournament's always after the Masters. Last year was the exception because of the lockdown situation. But um, yeah, traditionally, players that contend in the Masters don't do very well the following week. Oh, okay. Uh, but um, yeah, Siwoo Kim didn't really get in the, the thick of things. He's my number three selection. Siwoo Kim. He made headlines for all the wrong reasons last week. He broke his putter in round two, ended up putting with his three wood for the remainder of the round. Uh, he finished in um, 12th place in the tournament, which was a good effort in this circumstance. I mean, he, he's, he's playing fantastic. He just needs to control that temper. He's got a fierce temper and he needs to start holding some putts. And I think that the, the putting debacle, will actually help him this week because he, he may go back to the conventional putting grip. When we were on him in the American Express at the start of the year, putted, putted lovely under pressure and, and, and with a conventional grip. And now he's, he's suddenly switched to the claw. I didn't, I didn't like it. I hope he goes back to, back to basics. Um, you've got something to say he there. Didn't yeah. actually, deep breath in no, there. he didn't actually break the putter. He just bent it, didn't he? And apparently with the putter, once it loses its original form or something, because I remember, do you watch um, Curb Your Enthusiasm? There was an episode once based on Larry had, had lost a bet and the, the guy who, who beat him putted really well, but it turned out his putter was misaligned. It has to be a particular sort of, um, I don't know, verticalness or something. So he, he didn't actually break the putter, he just bent it and that was enough yeah. for him to have to not use it. Yeah. That's it. When he told his coach he didn't to mean to break it, he, he, he has got a, he, he, sometimes he intends to break it. He's such a psychopath. But on yeah, this I think he was trying he to punish it, wasn't he? Like, like when <laughs> Basil Forty smashed his car over the head with, uh, not the head, the, the roof with the branch because it didn't start. I think he was just trying to teach his putter a lesson. But he was, he was, and it the went, joke it, was on him. It went horribly wrong. But I'm hoping he will go back to the conventional putting. And I think if he does that, he's got a golden chance and a course that really suits. I'm going to test your memory again. You probably do remember this because it was so traumatic. The 2018 RBC Heritage. We were on Siwoo Kim, 125. Yeah. And he I was absolutely cruising to victory. And he missed he missed four putts shorter than seven mm -hmm. feet over the closing four holes. I will never forget that. That's ingrained in my memory for life. Because I was watching that with my father-in-law. Just me and my father-in-law in his lounge uh, on the Sunday. Everyone was elsewhere. And so I, had to, I was going to win a fortune off Siwoo Kim. And I had to retain my composure as he, as he ended up going into a playoff and losing to Satoshi Kudera. Um, so, yeah. RBC Heritage. Did you tell, how much did you tell the father-in-law you'd had on Samu Kim? <laughs> yeah. Friendly two quid each way or something. <laughs> I didn't really mention this day. He knew how much I was going to win, I think. He, he was, I think he was impressed how well I handled it, but uh, I had no choice. I, you know, bursting into tears in front of your father-in-law is not really a, an option, is it? <laughs> 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 so Samu Kim owes us one in the Heritage. And he's our number three selection. And our number four selection is Brandon Grace, who has won the Heritage, the 2016 Heritage champion. Seaside tracks like this one right up, to, up his street. He won the Puerto Rico Open at the end of February, similar assignment. Had a little break before the Texas Open last time out. Seemed a bit rusty on his return, but he improved his score each day. 75, 71, 70, 68, finished 23rd. Didn't play in the Masters. Fresh as a daisy for this one. So number four selection, Brandon Grace. And the final one, this is why I have zero guilt for having five selections, really, because it's uh, a 500 to one chance. You get 1,000 to one with one firm. Um, Bryson Nimmer. Uh, there's a lot of talk about... Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about Bryson DeChambeau. Well, there's another Bryson on the scene now who could forge a, a strong God, professional. Put my glasses on to find him. Hang on. Bryson Nimmer is a general five. Oh yeah, Bryson Nimmer. Yeah, N I W -M, M E R. That's a new one on me. Tell me all about Bryson Nimmer. Bryson Nimmer has been really impressive in low grade events over the last year or so. He got an invite for the Puerto Rico Open in February. Did okay. Finished 39th. This is his local knowledge is the key to this bet. He grew up 20 minutes from from Harbour Town, knows the course very well. He's had a lot of success in in Hilton Head competitions. Uh, and in his last tournament last week, uh, it was a 36 hole pairs event in Texas. And his team car did a 21 under par total uh, to win a hundred thousand dollar check. They won that tournament. He, he paired up with a player he'd never met before and he, he, he won a hundred thousand dollars. So he, he's, he's had that pre tournament boost. He's clearly in form. And uh, he's going to a course he knows really well. He's 500 to one. Obviously, he's got no experience, but you know who knows? Who knows how good Bryson Nimmer is? He looks good to me. Um, wow. He's worth, worth taking the chance at that price, isn't he? Wow. Let's hope it's a case of 
winner nimmer chicken dinner that'd be good wouldn't it i like it i like it yes excellent wow bryson nimmer um going back up to the top of the market uh the the three players priced uh 20 to 1 or under dustin johnson i mean he did have a pretty wretched time last week and and that was a continuation of a poor run of form steve wasn't it can you see him bouncing back here it's quite fiddly and tight this place isn't it yeah, I had no no in- inclination to back him. I mean, his confidence has taken a hit. He's not got a good record in the in this event. I mean, it's, it's his home state. You know, he, he was born in South Carolina, but there's very little else going for him, I'd say, at those prices. OK. And Webb Simpson obviously likes it around here, doesn't he? But is he too short for you? Defending champion. And, and in the Masters, he made a slow start. But then he made. He, he, I heard him interview. He said he made some swing adjustments. His caddy spotted something in his swing, and he, he was swinging much better over the weekend. Very, very tempted by Webb Simpson. There's two players this week that I was going to back until I saw their prices. And Webb Simpson was one of them. 12 to 1 Webb Simpson I can leave alone. But, yeah, obvious chance. Who was the other one? It's in the other tournament. Thomas Detree in the other tournament. Oh, OK. Yeah, we'll yeah. get there for that one. And um, finally, quick word about Cantlay. Another one who, who really played like a drain last week, didn't he? He's gone off the boil since Pebble Beach, finished third at Pebble Beach and has gone off the boil. Had some health problems and um, yeah, really disappointing last week. Yeah, absolute horror story. So, yeah, not for me. OK, fine. Let's turn our attention to Austria. The European Tour springs back into life. And unusually, they've actually got a tournament in Europe. It's the Austrian Golf Open. Um, here are the leading prices. Thomas Detry favourite, round about nine to one. Sam Horsfield, 16s. Matthias Schwab, 16s. Justin Harding, 18s. Kamer, 20s. Kitty Yama, 20s. Luton, 20s. Rasmus Hoggard, 22. And it's 28 to one and upwards. So, not the highest class event. A tricky old field, wide open. And just the two selections, despite the open nature of the event. Steve, just tell us a little bit about the setup first and which kind of players it might suit. It's Diamond Country Club, 7,458 yards past 72. It's hosted since 2010. It was the Lioness Open. It was the Shot Clock Masters, very briefly. And uh, then it's become the Austrian Open. So it's a long course. and It's playing even longer at the moment because we've had lots of uh, bad weather there lately. We, we, we've, had, we've even had some light snow there this week. Um, soft conditions are expected further rain in the forecast the temperatures are set to be very low it's been hovering around 10 celsius and will be for the, for the whole tournament so the ball won't fly far so i can see big hitters taking over this tournament and um, there's a lot of good big hitters to choose from in this tournament okay just the two selections who are you going to go for first start it is just two i mean i i as I say, there's lots of decent big hitters in there, but most of them are course debutants. You've got Sam Horsfield and Rasmus Hogard. I'm big fans of both of them. Very, very tempted, but they've never played here before. I don't like backing course debutants. Thomas Detry is the one who has the course edge. He was eighth in this last year, and Detry's been playing very nicely. I think Detry will contend again, but it, as I say, I just couldn't couldn't get involved at the prices. The opening show, he opened up at 8-1, to one, and I just thought, I, I, you cannot play a maiden at 8-1. to one. Um, so I, I ditched him and I went round in circles and in the end ended up with two uh, enormous prices. Oh, blimey. Who are they then? Yeah, so the headline selection is a 250 to 1 chance um, and that is Hurley Long, who uh, we talked about at the start of the year. Hurley Long was a player to follow, a very promising German youngster. He, uh, he won't mind the cold weather, hits it far enough and he's excelled in Austria before. He, he won a pro golf tour event in um, in St. Polton in St. Polton in 2019. He ended up winning the Pro Golf Tour Order of Merit that year. And then last year, he won on the Challenge Tour. He won the Italian Challenge Open in October. So he's been moving steadily up the grades. I think Hurley Long's going to have a successful career. And his amateur career was, was impressive. He went to college in Texas. Uh, and the highlight of that, we mentioned it in, at the start of the year in our season preview, the highlight of that was a 61 at Pebble Beach. Hurley Long is the Pebble Beach course record holder. And he has an incredible achievement. You know, when, when Hurley Long gets gets hot, he's capable of some serious fireworks. He carded a final round 60 to win that event in Austria on the Pro Golf Tour. He and that and then a 61 as an amateur in a Pebble Beach, a decent, decent amateur event at Pebble Beach. So um yeah, he's not got much experience, he's not had many chances, he doesn't get in many events. I think this is a great opportunity for him. And he has course experience. He finished 34th in the Austrian Open last year. Fab. He's another one who could fall into our stable of, of golfers who sound a bit like racing greyhounds, isn't he? Hurley Long. You could see him being a, a <laughs> wide run around at Bruff Park. And it was interesting. So actually, you used the greyhound analogy, didn't you? So he's rising through the grades. So let's hope, he's, let's hope he's A1. OK, so Hurley Long's your first tip. I mean, this is like Rumpelstiltskin trying to guess who, who the second tip's going to be. It could be anyone. Go on, put us out of our misery. <laughs> 
<laughs> you got me thinking about Graham racing. I haven't been Graham racing for so long. I'm desperate yeah. to get back there. And did you know that Paul, you know, your local track, Paul, is closed. Oh, don't get me started on that. Yeah, I was absolutely heartbroken. I think Swindon might be my, my closest track now, you know. God, that's yeah, mad, how, how can a man living in Wales? I was thinking, actually. Thought, Racing, I have to go to Swindon. Yeah, Swindon's low miles away, but I think that's my closest track. Oh but, no, I must admit, I'd love a night at the dogs now. And I love the little blighters, don't you? Oh, just yeah, yeah the canine crusaders. Yeah, I do miss them. You've got a dog over your left ear, by the way. Did you know that? Well, yeah, not yeah, a real one, but right. a, a picture of one. Sam from the office, you know, Sam from the graphics desk, she, she drew that. Oh, that's Brilliant. Lovely. She yeah, does a bit yeah. of art on the side. It's fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, we digress. Come on, who's the second tip? The second tip in the Austrian Open is Will Besseling. Uh, we've mentioned the lack of course experience of many of the market principles. Will Besseling won't be worried about that. He can hit the, hit the ground running. He finished third in the, last year's Austrian Open and he outscored everybody on the Sunday with a 66. And I think the conditions this year suit him even better, much softer and... Um, He's a massive driver, Will Besseling, one of the longest drivers on the circuit. He's already won the Challenge Tour a long, long time ago, actually, in 2008. He's finished third four times on the European Tour. It's just his short game stopped him from winning. But this week, straightforward test suits him and, and, the, and the greens will be very slow. So I think that will help him. Um, oh, I've got so, 55 to 1 on my list. 55 to 1, Will, Will, Will Besseling. I mean, Will Zalator was making all the headlines last week. This week, Will, with only one L, could, uh, could make some headlines. Excellent. OK, um, if you were going to have a third selection, who's the last one off the list? Uh, it would have been either. It would have been Rasmus Hogard. Yeah, Rasmus Hogard and Sam Horsman. I was just wrestling with them. But as I say, I've got this um, dislike for, um, for course, Davidson. So, I mean, Thomas Detry. Um, yeah, Thomas Detry. Ah, yeah, Detry, Hogard, Horsford. If, if, if one of those three wins, which is entirely feasible, I can go, OK, disappointing. But, you know, you've got to play the prices. You can't just back any, any you know, players Correct. at any old price, you know. Absolutely, mate. OK, let's recap your selections. There's five in the RBC Heritage and they are? Matthew Fitzpatrick, Abraham Answer, Siwoo Kim, Brandon Grace and Bryson Nimmer. And just two in the Austrian Golf Open who are? Hurley Long and Will Besseling. OK, thanks, Steve. Have you dusted yourself down then from the Masters Disappointment? Are you raring to go again or is it a sort of residual kind of? This, you know, feeling of dismay. It's amazing how resilient you, you learn to be. I mean, you, 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 you know, sometimes on a Sunday, you're just so crestful and you think, I cannot do this anymore. And then the prices come out for the, <laughs> for the next week's tournaments <laughs> and you just go, oh, that's a big price. Oh, you might go away. You just suddenly, it's like, it is like being at war, like the great war that's gone on for like 20 years. Um, and you, um, yeah, you just become battle hardened. Yeah. Right. I'm ready to go again. I'm ready to go again. I'm ready to watch Hurley Long and, and Bryson Nimmer win. And uh, if you have the each way double on that, yeah, the place part of that double will make you rich. OK, a slightly questionable analogy, but uh, OK, but we, we do go again. Fresh battles and so we, 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 we get it done. Have you enjoyed the um, easing of lockdown? Look at me. I've had my barnet done. I had a pint of beer in a pub beer garden. It's lovely. It feels like it feels good to be back. Why don't you go and have a glass of ale in a pub? I, I would do. I just unfortunately got too many work commitments. The um, the head of sport is a real um, real tyrant. He never lets me uh, have a moment's rest. Um, don't know if you've heard of him. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure he'd allow you to pop down to the local and, and have a, a, a tincture or two. Why not? No, no, I shall. No, I'm looking forward to get out there. I, I keep the hat on, not just <clears> the <throat> woods, but there's loads of hair in that hat. Um, so I am looking forward to getting a haircut and sorting my beard out. I saw one chap having a little uh, mentioned a little Happy Gilmore's caddy last week. I found that very amusing. Um, but once I go and see my barber, he's all booked up at the moment. You can't get a slot, but once I get oh, that no. slot, and then yeah, yeah, I am looking forward to tincture. Wednesday night, I better get tincture in. Oh, lovely, good stuff. <clears throat> okay, Steve, sorry about that. Um, what have we got next week on the show? That's a great question. That's a really good question. I um, let me check my timetable. Oh yes, 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 yes. You out there? No, no, this was an easy one to forget, actually, because it's a new one. It's the Gran Canaria Lopazan Open, a new European oh, tournament right. in Spain. Yeah, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that one much. And then we've got the Zurich Classic in New Orleans as well, which is a, a pairs event, isn't it? Still, Is that still a pairs event? Exactly. So, yeah, we're not a great week next week. Not a great week. But well, you never know. It might be good. There might be some good betting opportunities. 
you know, they might they might be. Yeah, uh, uh, Bryson Nimmer actually was trying to get a place in that Zurich Classic Pairs event because they just they won that pairs event last week very impressively. They actually I saw them tweet a, tweet the Zurich Classic organisers trying to get a place in that. So, you know, if Bryson Nimmer wins this week, then they might get a little sponsors invite to the Zurich, Zurich Classic. Brilliant. It's Bryson oh, Mania. I'm looking it's Bryson Mania in, in, in absolutely. I'm looking forward to having a bet on Bryson Nimmer. I must say that. Okay, Steve. Many thanks indeed, my friend. Um, good luck this week. Hope the uh, tips go well. Hope you enjoy your little taste of freedom for your Wednesday night out. Um, and we're back next week. So thank you for joining us on the sweet spot. As we always say, bet responsibly, have fun and do join us next week. Mm-hmm.